the amateurs and even at the professional ranks, but a, a good one, no doubt about it. Is the gate set to drop on this one, guys? Yep, B class underway. As we mentioned, it was Matty Jorgensen getting the win the first time out. And Hayden Deegan, one of the favorites, DNF the moto with a busted rear wheel. Got collected up with uh, Evan Ferry. Evan Ferry tipped over. Deegan's rear wheel hit Ferry's uh, foot peg, I believe. And that was that. So Deegan on a revenge run here. And this is Matty Jorgensen's chance to make a name for himself, really put himself on the map. We see it in the B class all the time where uh, riders take that next step. Maybe they weren't there in the uh, mini bike divisions, but they do it on the big bikes. Evan Ferry off to the early lead in this one. I'm going to call Stacey Holshot award for the 75. So Ferry who had that tip over Moto One? I think he got third. Is out front. And somewhere, Steve Mathis is having a great time watching this, huh, Weed? <laughs> Absolutely. Which I did not think I could say about a, him watching an amateur race. Uh, you talk about 20 years since you've come here. Yeah, Mathis's old buddy, his kid, is about to be pro. That's how quickly time flies. Uh, there is Deegan about mid-pack. Now remember that DNF in Moto One, Adam. He's got a terrible gate pick again. Terrible gate pick and. Man, the ruts are so deep, so deep. It looks like they ripped the track. Um, and I think, you know, when everybody's bunched up these first couple laps, you have a bad gate pick like that. Obviously, the emphasis is just getting around as many guys as possible while everybody's stacked up. And it looks like he's making his way towards the front. We may have a Evan Ferry Deegan battle. Yeah, a little bit of heat yesterday. They both said it was a race against it, and Ferry just tipped over. It wasn't like uh, he got taken out or anything. But those deep ruts. Track always. Oh, go ahead. You got something on that? Yeah. Well, even okay. if you say it's a racing incident, <laughs> if you get if you get cleaned out and you and you complain about it, you don't say it's a racing incident. It's it's just not the look you want. You know. So, so it, there's there's so still everything's gonna a be, racing incident. There's, everything's racing. There's okay. still gonna be a little yep. a little attitude with this one if I had to guess. Well, Ferry had just crashed and Deegan tried to get out of the rut and around him and didn't make it, and that was the end of it. So. Daxton Bennett, who had a great race yesterday, he kept Deegan honest in the other class all the way to the end. I feel like it's kind of a rebirth here for Dax Bennett. He's had a couple of rough years at Loretta's. He's second, and there's Jorgensen in third. So we're off to the races, Roddy. This is going to be good. Absolutely, and our key players that we want to see up front are just exactly there. Deegan, like I say, buried back there in 10th place at the end of lap number one. But uh, uh oh, make, somebody's bike smoking here. That's the 29 at Julian Bomer, I uh -oh. believe. Bomer, if we take a look at Moto One results, DNF and Moto One, so this might be a problem that might be re arising for him. Jeez, man, and it's it's never a good feeling when you when you see the bike smoking and you're out there. I mean, what are you going to do? You're not. Oh, oh. oh, that's Jorgensen, isn't it? No, that's Benick. Benick, our second place rider, has gone down. And, oh, he might have hurt himself. Is that Jorgensen or Benick? Is either I the think one it was four Jorgensen. or the four one? Uh oh, that's our first Moto winner. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Was it the one four or the four one? It. And sometimes when you go down like that and it's so soft like this, you basically need a shovel to try to get your grip out of the dirt. <laughs> Looks like he was just trying to find where the handlebar was right there. Okay, that's better than uh, he banged himself up in that crash. I'll give it that. There is Ferry. It's Benick still up. So yeah. our first motor winner has crashed. That's changed things in a hurry. Right now, Ferry might be, I know it's early days, but he'd be sitting on a 3-1 right now if he can hold this. Benick's definitely starting to come on strong this year. Two rough years at the Reds in the B class, like I said. I think he's starting to close the gap here. AC's he's catching Ferry a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it. These front two look like they're breaking away a little bit. Uh, I see Deegan back there in 10th. These next few laps are going to be really important. Uh, these guys are going to get away if he doesn't get up there quick. Okay, uh, you had a year like that, I think, where things were just going bad right from the start. How hard is it to get your head back in the game? If you're Deegan, you have no chance for the title. You DNF the first moto. Can you really bring that same intensity to two motos that are not going to mean anything title-wise? Well, I think it's, you know, if you blow it in the first moto, something happens, you're not able to win the title. You just want to prove that you're the best guy. Okay. So there's a lot of motivation from that standpoint. The pressure's off, and you want to go out there and just and just lay it down and, and feel like you proved to everybody and to yourself that, that you're the best guy. So I think um, regardless of the title situation, I think Deegan, Deegan is going to be motivated to, to make something happen here. Is there any honest redemption out of doing something like that? Say you have a DNF in Moto 1 and come out and sweep the second. Do you feel somewhat redeemed? Oh, yeah, I, I think so for sure. Um, you know, you go DNF 1-1, one, one, it's kind of, <laughs> you're, you're, you're still like the guy. Right. You know, and um, from the, you know, the guy that had a good, like Evan Ferry in the first moto, went in the first moto, for him it's, obviously he knows he doesn't need to beat him, right? So uh, kind of a catch-22 there, but yeah, you want to you want to sweep it if you can, obviously. We'll see how this plays out. Deegan's up to fourth, but 
Julian Bomer, who's in third, has the bike that's smoking. I don't know if it's going to get to the end. And our first moto winner after the tip over, I think he might be done. He was not rushing back to the motorcycle, Jorgensen. He's and he's to not in our top 16. We don't have him on the board. No, he's fourth. He's 12th right now. 12th yeah. place. Oh, man, that's going to be tough. Can he even scratch it back into the top five? So Ferry, who's third in Moto1, he's got an opportunity here. But he's got to get away from Dax Bennett. Let's see where Bennett's scores were in the first he Moto. He finished fourth in Moto1, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, nice. fourth. Uh, so he's looking at a 4-2 right now. Oh, so there's every bit of motivation for Bennett to try to get Ferry and make it a 4-1. And, and that would tie them up. Yeah, and just being kind of disconnected from the amateur scene, obviously doing my own thing and, and coming back and seeing these guys, it's, it's crazy to see how riding styles have evolved. I see these guys carrying so much roll speed into these turns. Um, I think I think as an older guy, you always kind of tend to say, like, oh, back in my day, we were this, we were that. Okay. But everything is progressing. Everything is progressing. And, and just watching these two uh, go at it right now, it's – it's crazy to see the improvement. And I'll tell you who's improved. It's Benick because yeah. he has cut that gap down on Ferry. Uh, how much can be gained and lost just by line choice with how wide this track gets and all those reps? I mean, how much of it is just speed or how much is it better lines? Well, I think with a track like this that has so many ruts, once you start going to, like, whatever you... Oh, it looks like we Oh, have here it is right here. Here it is. Oh, is he going to make the move on the outside? He's got the inside in this left-hander. Benick. Who can get the drive off? Mistake by Ferry Benick to the lead. Well, there's the lines working for him. Yeah, and I think it's tough once you start going to your line the first couple laps. It's easy to get, it's easy to get locked into the one line and not want to experiment with others because there's so many out there. You're almost overwhelmed. So I think it's just about you know Evan needs to kind of sit behind Daxon and and try to figure out where he's better and maybe you know make a run at him here in a few laps. Yeah, we had Jeff Emig up here yesterday. He was saying, think about how difficult it is to be taking your line. And then also kind of, hey, I'm going to look at that one and think about that maybe the next time around. And I had never thought of it that way. You're doing two things at once, really. Yeah. And scouting a line while you're in another. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have to keep your head on a swivel. It's We always talked about Stu back in the day having great peripheral vision. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge thing. You keep your, you know, keep your head up. Like I said, keep your head on a swivel. Adapt as the motor goes on and... You know, we see we see Tomac, Sexton do the same thing. You know, the, the guys at the top of the sport are always doing that. Oh, Whoa. square up. <laughs> nice by Deegan to go from outside to in and get around Julian Bomer for the number three spot. That's the good news. The bad news for them is they're almost six seconds back of the leaders. You know, the interesting thing to me about that, that, that final turn, did you notice there were, you know, definite defined entrances? And then when you come out, there's like two different exits out of the same line. And, uh, I mean, do, do those develop like that purposefully? I think a lot of the times when the rut blows out or it creates a big hook in the rut, guys will start kind of early apexing, cutting out of the rut, just so they're not getting the disruption of, of the hook and, and having to clutch it and keep the front wheel down. Um, man, these guys are ripping. <laughs> <laughs> the roll speed right there totally caught you. Yes. So with roll speed, explain what that is. That's like mid-corner. I think what I've seen in yeah. racing the last, you know, since I've been doing it, is guys, normally it's really fast coming into the turns, yeah. you brake really hard, get on the gas really hard, and, and what I've noticed, the trend, um, especially in the pro ranks now, and it's trending down to the amateurs, is just a lot of coasting. You, you grow up and you're kind of told not to coast, yeah. but these guys are light on the brakes, the bike works way better, especially in these uh, ruts that have bumps in them, yeah. if, you, if you're light on the brakes. So it, it's more of just like a, um, it's not a, not a go stop. It's kind of just like a consistent mile per hour through these turns. That, that makes sense. Uh, we were talking about that. There's a, I used to say that was Ryan Dungy. Light brake, light gas. One consistent speed instead of 100% one or 100% of the other. If you average it out, it's fast. Exactly. And think about when you're, when you're charging so hard in, braking so hard, and then getting on the gas again. That's a lot of weight change. You know, you're, you're taking a lot on your forearms. It, it becomes difficult to ride like that. So um, I would say the ceiling is higher if you can figure out how to have roll speed. Obviously, there's guys like Barsha. The, you know, there's guys yeah. that ride different ways and, and get it done different ways. But if I had to uh, pick a riding style, that would be the most efficient across all conditions. But let me ask you this. How hard is it mentally to know that is faster? Because nothing feels faster than 
come in and break as hard and late as possible and get on the gas as hard as possible. Well, it's really tough to make that change yeah. because you do feel like you're going so slow. <laughs> right. Um, I've been fortunate a lot to ride with, with Ken Roxon, and he is the king of that roll speed. You know, he'll land off a triple with, with – 10 feet to the next corner, you won't even touch the brakes or the gas. You just roll through the turn, right? <laughs> so it, it's a lot of um, specific work you have to do to understand that that's faster. So you've done it. You've gone out there specifically riding with that skill set in mind. In 2016, yeah. when I came back from injury, yeah. I, I didn't do too good that outdoor season, but that was the only thing in my mind all season long was no way. I have to figure out because gets where I was with my riding style, I had reached my ceiling. I, I ah. couldn't get any better. That, that was going to be it. So I had, to, I had to slow it down in my mind until I started to figure it out, and then, then you're start able to kind of build speed from there. So you would actually, you probably were slower at first. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Quite <laughs> a bit. Wild. Quite really? a bit slower. And it, it's difficult <laughs> because you just, you just want to make a lot of noise, a lot of clutch, a lot of gas, and especially when you've been doing that a long time, you, you, know, you, you create those habits, and it's difficult to get out of. But just watching these kids now, man, they, they have it so down. It's so fun to watch. Watching, uh, you saw Ferry there. He's back to second and losing some ground. So Benick is getting away. If it ends like this, Benick is sitting on a 4-1, and Ferry would be sitting on a 3-2. They would be tied right, yep. going into the final moto. As for poor Matty Jorgensen, he was third early in this moto. He crashed. He's ninth. He would have a 1-9. And Deegan's out of it because he DNF'd up the first moto. But let's see if Deegan, could he track down Ferry? Looks like he's got about three seconds to make up. Plenty of time left. About eight minutes. It's going to be a good one, Weech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah. be a good one. All right, because we got, we're only halfway, and it's making up about a half second a lap. It could come right down to the end. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see if there's some little attitude involved. I know Why it was not? a racing incident. That's right. I know it was a racing incident. That's but right. These guys are so competitive. They want to win so bad. And it looks like he's gaining on them a little yeah. bit. He has gained on it quite a bit. He knocked it down from a five-second gap between he and Ferry now down to just over three seconds at 3.1. So, yeah, he is uh, definitely on the, the charge. He just turned to 155. Point one five one. That's not the fastest. Now, Benick has a 154.9, just below the 155. But uh, I'll tell you, these guys have got some great speeds right now. Yeah, he, he, that 155, I believe that's Deegan's best of the moto. It was almost two seconds quicker than Ferry. So he was inching up on him. A couple tenths here and there. Another mistake by Ferry. This is going to help Deegan even more. I wouldn't be surprised if we got him in the same shot soon on the uh, trip back to Storyland back here. So Benick is the best time of the moto, and he's pulling away. But this battle for second, yeah, it's starting to heat up. In, in a track like this, so deep ruts, a lot of tight corners. When you're not flowing and you're making some mistakes, it's easy for that to snowball. Because more effort doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go faster. You have to you have to try hard in the right areas. And a lot of the times it's like what we talked about. It's a lot of roll speed, um, a lot of coasting, being light on the bike, carrying momentum. And, uh, yeah, on, on tracks like, yeah, and on tracks like this specifically, when it starts going south for you, it can be difficult to get it back on track. Man, those ruts are unbelievable right there. And Ferry stuck behind a lap rider. There's one lap rider between him and Deegan. But Deegan is a whole lot closer than he was two laps ago. And we're about to have a battle for second on our hands. And can Ferry survive this? He needs every position. He gets bumped back to third. That's going to change the championship picture. There's your leader, 41 of Dax Benick. Great moto yesterday. About the second off of uh, Deegan at the end. And they used to battle wheel to wheel. I mean, Deegan and uh, Benick in the uh, 85cc ranks, 65s, they were almost equals. And then Deegan really got the drop on him the last couple of years. Good to see Benick back on his old form. There's Ferry. And let's see how close it is. There's Deegan. Two seconds is what we're seeing right now. So another second peeled off there by Hayden Deegan. Lap times that time, 158 and a half. Pretty consistent for Ferry at 157.2 that time for Hayden Deegan. So he just keeps chipping. See Deegan wheelie that? Wheelie oh, yeah. Those bumps there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some goat farm stuff right there. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe genies on them. It is fun. Yeah, so the Star Racing team purchased Ricky Carmichael's old riding facility, the goat farm, and the team works there, and their trainer, Gareth Swanepoel, works there. But Jeannie Carmichael still shows up. She's part of the, she's part of the, the they, deed. <laughs> and so Bobby Regan, the team owner, said, don't worry, the goats are still there. The goats are still on the farm. So Ricky's mom still shows up. The riders tell him, they're like, man, if you see this, 
beat up Chevy Tahoe driving up the road, you're in for a long day. <laughs> so uh, he soaked up those lessons, I'm sure. I'll try to keep this story short. Okay. But my, my first time to Richie's track back in 2008, the year after he retired, uh, we were both out there uh, for some type of photo shoot, but doing a moto. My dad was giving me the pit board next to Jeannie, and my dad was drinking the water. And Jeannie said, no, 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 they can't have water when they're out on the track, so I'm not going to have I'm not like, what? There's no water allowed what? until they're done. So I thought that was pretty I cool. Thought, that's gnarly just for the sake of being gnarly. Right? There's no need for that except I'm the tough. Wow. <laughs> that's what they preach down there. It's Deegan soaking it up. But uh, he, he had the 155 the previous lap, then a 157. Let's see what this time is. He's catching Ferry, but not as quickly as he was a few laps ago. And sometimes you have to be really disciplined. Obviously, Deacon did that 155. He got super close. But then you start getting closer to them. You kind of start paying attention to their line, start paying attention to oh, kind okay. of, you know, you kind of get locked in on the back of their jersey. So Hayden just needs to keep doing what he's doing, Ooh. doing his own thing. And, wow, that was a cool line. Yeah. Hopping and popping. If you believe what timing and scoring saying right here, it's saying less than a second separated those guys as they came across the finish line stripe. And if that be the case, Barry is under some really – Hot and high pressure right now. And only two to go. So time running out for Deegan to get him. And again, Ferry needs this spot. He has a 3-3 going into the final moto. That's a big advantage. Oh, well, here it comes. Bennett. He's got to run on the inside here. He's got the line. That outside line, we heard Megawatt talking about it. If you can get the drive, you can triple, triple through this. But, man, Deegan's go. got the better drive from the inside, it looks like. Well, that did not work out for Ferry at all. That wasn't even close how, how wide he went. And... Uh, he never even saw Deegan. They never even came close to each other. Deegan has the spot. So, advantage, Dax Bennett now. Yeah, he absolutely. can be sitting on a 4-1 and make his life a whole lot easier going into that last moto. It's odd to think that fourth in moto one is what got the job done, but the scores don't lie. Let's see the second that one, base fluke. We finally got base fluke on the radar. He is fifth right now. Somehow, Julian Bomer's bike is still going. Started smoking on the second lap. He's scoring base blue the fifth. So base blue could have a 2 5. So he's still in contention. He'll be a point off of, or two points off of Bennick. Dayton Briggs sixth. Trevor Collins seventh. Jorgensen has climbed back up to eight. So he'd have a 1 8. Casey Bernard is ninth. Trevin Nelson rounds up the top 10. Aiden Keeper 11th. Lane Allison 12th. Lux Turner. Mark Finesse. Ron Johnson and Grant Kaufman at your top 16. With the white flags coming out here for Bennick. And how about yeah. it for, for Dax Bennett? Go ahead, boys. Yeah, I mean, how about it for Dax Bennett? I mean, th this is a rider that we've obviously watched grow through the Loretta Lynn ranks. And, you know, each year he seems to just be, be more and more solid. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, I expected him to be a contender. But, Adam, he is really in control of things right now. Yeah, it's interesting, the development. Everybody has a kind of unique development. You know, um, Some guys will take big steps from our 85. Some guys will kind of wait until they get on big bikes to make that next step up. But um, definitely, I, I see what you see. And I, I've watched Dax grow up a little bit. And just this last couple of years, he's made a big step. And you can kind of tell, um, you can kind of see the progression. You can see the kind of his arc and, and where he's going to go. And, man, does it look good right now. <laughs> he's making it look easy. He is, and whenever you take into account the talent that he's battling against, I mean, not only in, in, in Evan Berry and Hayden Deegan, but, I mean, the rest of this class, riders like Base Blue, riders like Jorgensen, uh, you know, uh, riders like Mark Phineas, I mean, those are some top riders that we expect up there as well. And, I mean, and we've got other riders, Bomer, uh, Dayton Briggs up there, Trevor Collip is, is another rider we've watched grow up. And, man, he is really solid here a as he moves through the ranks. Absolutely. I mean, you have a lot of these guys in the top ten that have a potential to have a real future in the sport, you know, to have factory rides, to, to be up there on podiums and, you know, pro motocross and, um, and, and that's been one of the big surprises to me. You know, at one time it was all about the prodigies. They made the step out. They made the step up. You win the Horizon more, do the next big thing. And now we're seeing a lot of these riders that maybe never won a championship, maybe only win a few golds here and there. When they make their way to the, the professional ranks, they appear to actually be stronger. Yeah. They do better there than what they did in the amateur side. Well, there's no secrets anymore. Everybody knows what everybody's doing program-wise. And... Um, I think that's why you see the, the gap getting closer and closer. Checkers are out. And Dax and Benick has taken the win. Sorry about that. Hayden Deegan taking second. Evan Ferry in third. That's the way they'll go to the podium. Looks like Bomer, Base Flug in four and five. Then Briggs, Collip, 
Jorgensen should hold on for eighth. Bernard in ninth, and Trevin Nelson in the number 10 spot. And it looks like Daxton was so focused, so locked in, that he just kept going on the checkered flag. He's out there <laughs> I was doing say, another he's one. He's still going after, but I, I swore I saw a checkered flag. Yeah, fitness looks good <laughs> on the bright side. Hey, I have got two greats here in the racing world. I don't, do you know that guy right behind you by any chance? Oh yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> Stupid. this guy could tune me up. Hey, I'll tell you, he didn't see himself go to the checkers as Bendik himself. He did an extra lap. He kept cruising. So I'm going to go three, two, one with this podium because Dax just got in here, took an extra two minutes to get back over to the podium. He didn't see the checkers, I would assume. So I'm going to look for our third place finisher, Evan Ferry, and we'll bring him up and we'll do a three, two, one podium because Bendik took a victory lap. Uh, so we're looking for the third place finisher here. And a good run for him. He also got the Stasic Hole Shot Award. And a good battle with both Benick and Deegan to put his Yamaha up in the third. Let's bring Evan Ferry on up when we can get him. And then we'll talk to Hayden Deegan second and our Moto winner, who is Dax Benick. So we're looking for Evan. Uh, you actually got the hole shot the other day. You were nice enough. You thought somebody else got it. So your starts are certainly dialed. How's the rest of the riding going? Uh, the rest of the riding going really good. You know, I'm definitely trending in the right direction. I uh, had some pretty big get-offs, I guess, you know, the first couple days. So, you know, working those kinks out. But, you know, I'm feeling better each day. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm super excited to come out with a pretty good, you know, being in the contention for the title. All right, who do you want to thank, Evan? Uh, you know, Ed Torrance and Jake Butler and the whole NSA Yamaha team. They had that bike hooking up really good on the start. The Dunlop tires working really good. And, um, yeah, you know, I want to thank all those guys, Alpine Star, Bell, Rockstar, uh, Moose, and uh, FMF, and uh, every, everybody that helps me out. Um, thank you. There it is, third place, Evan Ferry. And now we'll bring up our runner-up, which is Hayden Deegan, uh, DNF motor number one, and uh, had a bad gate pick, bad start in this one. Was able to come back and almost, almost got to the rear wheel of your race winner at the end with a ridiculous last lap. Let's hear it for Danger Boy, Hayden Deegan. Uh, once again, you had a, I'm, I'm assuming, terrible gate from that first moto, right? Yeah, it's kind of annoying, you know, I started 40th gate, it was my fault though, me and Evan came together, but yeah, I just ripped that, and uh, the kid next to me kind of turned into me, so I got a very bad uh, start, and I seen, there were like three sections ahead, I'm like, this ain't going to be good, I got to charge, so I made my way up to Evan, got around him, and then I set my eyes on Dax, I only had two laps left, and I got close, but uh, it was a good race, Daxon did well. Okay, who do you want to thank? The whole Monster Energy Stars, the Yamaha team, uh, my mom, dad, Mechanic Wyatt, Everyone at the Star Yamaha team, they do a great job helping me get here. And, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. And Method Race Wheels. Okay, there it is. Silver medal, Hayden Deegan. He's going to play spoiler in this championship. Uh, he didn't finish the first moto with the broken wheel, but it's going to be interesting, that final moto. Now we will give the gold out. This championship is crazy. First moto winner, Matt Jorgensen, crashed in this moto. He finished eighth or ninth. So this guy is sitting on a 4-1 and that would actually give him the points lead going into the third and final moto. And he had to work for it, had to get around Ferry to make it happen. I had to get my extra sight lap in because I missed the first one. Okay, okay, there we go. You know the lines now. Uh, how was that moto for you? Uh, it was good. I got up to a second place start, which I, need, I know I need to do, and uh, just rode smart. And then once I got past Evan, I started trying to hammer a little bit. And I know it was a good race. The, track was pretty tricky but I had a lot of fun your confidence has to be growing the moto scores keep getting better and better now you got a gold is it getting better throughout the week confidence wise yeah definitely getting a lot better that was that was a big one 